Hi everyone, my name is Krista Brame and I am on the Partner Solutions Engineering team for our LinkedIn Marketing Solutions. And today I'm going to walk you through the LeadSync API migration. So what are we going to cover today? First things first, who should care? Are you the right person to be watching this video? Second, we'll walk through what the actual migration is, what's changing and when. Next, we'll break down the migration from form creation all the way to syncing leads and webhooks. And then lastly, we will recap and cover some resources. You should care about this migration and continue watching this video if you are a developer or a partner who creates lead generation forms via our APIs and or retrieves lead generation forms and syncs the form responses, also known as leads, via our APIs. So what's changing and when? Our legacy ads and events lead generation APIs are being sunset on July 15th, 2024. So if you are a partner or a developer who are using the legacy APIs listed here in either a create or read capacity or both, then you must migrate to the new LeadSync APIs before July 15th, 2024 to avoid disruption. After this date, API calls to the legacy endpoints listed here will start failing. First, we'll discuss the form creation use case before moving into the lead syncing use case. On the form creation side, lead generation forms can still be created using the existing RW ads permission and forms can still be retrieved using the existing R underscore ads permission. What's changing is the form creation schema, which I'll go into more detail about later in the video, as well as the API endpoint. So previously the endpoint was called slash ad forms and is now called slash lead forms. Let's talk about syncing leads. First, the legacy way, which is what you're familiar with today. The legacy way provided two unique permissions, our as lead gen automation and our events lead gen automation, which allowed you to retrieve forms and form responses tied to an ad or a LinkedIn event. If we provided a new lead type and a new permission that you wanted to build to, this would have required adding an additional scope to your OAuth flow, all of your customers having to reauthenticate, and for you to build to another set of unique API endpoints. As mentioned previously, these permissions and their endpoints will reach end of life in July 2024. What they're being replaced with is the new way, the LeadSync API, which is a new set of generic API endpoints and permissions that allow you to sync leads across both organic and sponsored services via two new permissions, our marketing lead gen automation and our events. The new LeadSync API supports syncing leads across ads, LinkedIn events, company and showcase pages, as well as product pages. A little later in this video, we'll see some examples of what these look like on LinkedIn to provide a bit more visual context around what these lead types are. A reminder that all existing developers must migrate to the new LeadSync API endpoints prior to July 2024 when the legacy endpoints reach end of life. This will require adding these two new scopes to your OAuth flow, which means that all of your customers will need to reauthenticate. So we strongly suggest migrating as soon as possible to provide your customers enough time to reauthenticate within your platform. Next, I'm going to walk you through three notable changes that come along with the migration. First is a schema change. The new LeadSync APIs come with a large schema change, but this means that the form schema for the sponsored use case ads is now the same as the form schema for organic use cases, events, company pages, product pages, etc., which simplifies form creation and lead syncing across lead types. Our migration guide, which will be linked in the description of this video, walks you through comparing the old schema to the new schema and what's changed. As an example, as you can see on the screen, in the old ad form responses schema, there was a field called ad form earn which is replaced with the field versioned lead gen form earn in the new lead gen form responses schema of the new lead sync APIs. The second notable change is response decoration. Response decoration is no longer supported across LinkedIn marketing APIs and the new lead sync API is no different. So how do you handle this change for lead syncing? The form response will now include the form schema via the form field. The new associated entity info field will provide basic information about the lead's associated entity, which could be an ad, a company page, or a LinkedIn event as an example. And the new lead metadata info field provides additional information for sponsored lead types, for example, the creative tied to the lead. Any additional metadata not provided will require you to make an additional API call. 
It's important to note that not all fields in the form response schema are returned by default. Our documentation makes it clear which fields these are, so you'll want to use field projection to pull back the fields you care about. A video on response decoration going away and using field projection will be linked in the description of this video. Additionally, our migration guide includes common examples of response decoration and how to get the same data using field projection. Looking at the example I've highlighted here, this is how you would have gotten the ad account ID and name associated with the form response using response decoration. You would have accessed the ad account ID by account.id, but in the new schema, you would access it via owner.sponsored account. And this is how it would be grabbed using field projection. Note these are very specific examples. And if you're looking for something a bit more generic, be sure to read all the way down to the end where we give you a more generic simplified example. The last notable change is for webhooks, which allows you to be notified in real time of a form response submission. So what's changed with the new lead notifications endpoint? The webhook subscription creation schema has changed. The webhook notification payload schema has changed. And webhook validation is now required, which means your webhook subscriptions must respond to a challenge code at a regular cadence. Before we go and take a look at the migration guide, it's important to note that if you were integrated with the legacy events lead generation webhooks, the new lead sync API webhooks are structured the same. Secondly, legacy ads lead generation webhook subscriptions will continue to receive notifications in the legacy notification payload schema until the legacy endpoints reach end of life in July 2024. So proper deduping logic should be put in place if not done so already. Also, the new LeadSync API webhooks support created and deleted notifications. So in the legacy way, your webhook would have received a notification when a form response was submitted, and that's it. In the new way, if a LinkedIn member chooses to delete that form response submission, you would also receive a deleted notification. So for a one-to-one -one migration, you'll only want to care about notifications where the lead action field is set to created. Let's go take a look at the migration guide. Same as before, it'll walk you through any schema changes. So here we see that there's a schema change in the way that you create notification subscriptions. Additionally, as stated, the notification payload schema has changed. It walks you through some examples of an old payload, the legacy way compared to the new payload. It also talks about the duplicate webhooks that we just talked about. And also goes through an example of how to create a webhook the legacy way and compare it to the new way. Looping back to earlier in the video when we were talking about the new lead syncing lead types across organic and sponsored use cases, let's see what that actually looks like on LinkedIn.com. An example of going to a products page, clicking on a specific product, clicking on the contact us CTA, and filling out a form response to submit a lead. Let's see this again. Next, we have an example of on a company page or a showcase page, scrolling down to click the contact sales CTA, and again, filling out a form response, submitting a lead. Lastly, on the organic side, we navigate to an event, and we want to register for this event by filling out the event registration form. And then on the sponsored side, we see an ad on linkedin.com. We click the sign up button and we fill out the form response. Before wrapping up, let's go through some frequently asked questions. One, do we need to request access to the new LeadSync API and thus the new endpoints and permissions? So existing apps that already had access to ads and or events lead generation APIs were automatically provisioned access to the new LeadSync API product. So if you don't have access or you created a new app and you want to have access to the new LeadSync API, feel free to go and apply for access via the developer portal. Two, how do I get support if I run into issues? Feel free to submit a ticket with our API support team at linkedin.zendesk.com. Three, do I need additional approval for webhook access? You do not. If you already have access to the LeadSync API, there is nothing more you have to do. 
After that, the LeadSync API webhook subscriptions are purely managed via the APIs, just as they were the legacy way. Four, what permissions are required to support an end-to-end -end lead syncing use case? Our marketing lead gen automation, our events, our organization admin, our ads, and our light profile, which is optional. Be sure to see our lead sync postman collection, which will be linked in the description of this YouTube video for an end-to-end -end example. And a reminder that form creation endpoints are available via the existing R underscore ads permission and form retrieval endpoints are available via the existing R ads permission within the advertising API product. Let's recap what we walked through today. First, form creation and lead syncing, retrieving forms and form responses, require a migration before July 2024 when the legacy endpoints reach end of life. This is a forced migration and your customers will need to re-authenticate, so please plan appropriately. Two, we walked through three notable changes that come with the migration. A form schema change, a webhook schema change, and response decoration no longer being supported. Thanks for your time and attention, and be sure to check out the description of this video for all migration-related resources, which additionally includes our public postman collection for the new LeadSync APIs.